Welcome to the Glow Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you for joining. Hope everyone is doing well out there. I hope you all are having a great week. Well, today we are talking about all things franchising. I don't know about you, but I know I have had many thoughts on franchising and just wondering, like, how do you actually get it started? There's so many, there's so much information out there, but then not enough information. There are so many people reaching out to you on LinkedIn, talking about franchising. There's just a world of things, but not really, from my perspective, a clear understanding of how you move forward if you are someone who would like to start a franchise business. Well, if you too are unsure where to start, what questions to ask, and so on and so on, my guest today is here to help you understand all things franchising. Diane Ploys is a franchise business consultant who helps women who want to rejoin the workforce after taking some time away to care for children or provide care to a loved one by introducing them to franchising. So stay tuned. I'll be right back with Diane. Welcome back to the Globe Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. Thank you all for joining. All right, I am back and now I have Diane with me. So welcome to the Globe Girl Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Awesome, awesome. Well, before we dive into all things franchise ownership, uh, why don't you get started by telling the audience who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Diane Ploys, and I'm a franchise business consultant, which means that I work with people who want a business, specifically a franchise, but they don't know which are the good ones and the not so good ones. They don't know how to go about investigating a business, and no one wants to make an expensive, embarrassing mistake. So I work with good people, learn about them, their goals, their skills, their interests, And then I suggest companies that would be available in their area that would meet what they're looking for and guide them through the investigation process. So at the end, they can make a sound business decision whether they want to move forward or take a pass. Fantastic. So I am very intrigued by franchises. And I think that a lot of times people, like you said, people are nervous because they don't know. And people just hear like, oh, yeah, you know, I started a franchise or you should franchise. And I don't know about anyone out there listening or watching us right now, but I know over the last like two years on LinkedIn, I've gotten so many emails and emails from people who are talking about like franchise businesses and ownership. And I like, I, I don't know like if it's real or not. So that's why I'm so glad to have you here to help um, help us sort of decipher the world of franchises. <laughs> sure. There is a lot of interest and partly I think because franchising has Im- improved, there's been a lot of private equity money that has been invested to uh, update the, the tech stack Uh, bring on additional people for support. They really fine tune a lot of things. And there are many people now that are looking at what we call manager run businesses, where if they like their job, they are looking at diversifying and investing in a business that they can hire a manager to run. So they have that fallback strategy, but another revenue source. And Mm -hmm. that didn't exist when I got into this many years ago, or certainly not the number (laughs) of companies that are available now. So there's some interesting new options. Yeah. So why do you, so let's start with the, why are people drawn to franchising? They're drawn because they want more freedom, more flexibility, more control. They may want to work with a spouse or a partner. They may want to have a business to hand off to their kids. They look at their job and they say, you know, I work so hard, I, I got the standard raise as everybody else, or look what I'm doing. And at the end of the day, what do I have to show for it? They 
They might have a good paycheck, but they have no equity. They cannot sell it. Right. And when it, and many times people are downsized through no fault of their own. I've worked with people who've been you know, won all these awards and yet their department was eliminated and they were part of it. Yeah, I, I definitely think that you said a lot of key things, but I think definitely hearing people wanting more freedom and flexibility. And I, I, I would probably say, um, and not to put you on the spot with like numbers or like franchise owner and owners and that type of data, but would you probably say that you've seen the opportunities or the interest grow like over the last few years since the pandemic? Exactly. And many times when people were able to work from home, they realized they didn't miss that commute. They didn't necessarily <laughs> miss the office politics. I'm reading posts now where people are saying, man, the person in the cubicle next to me is so loud, loud or <laughs> I, I put my lunch in the refrigerator and, and someone, you know, took some stuff out of it or whatever the, the case is. And they look at it and say, I'm capable, I'm competent. I can do a lot more than what I'm doing and I could do it to benefit myself and my family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you, we, as we opened with, you know, like the interest in franchising, um, what do you think, what assumptions, um, when you talk to people that you work with, what assumptions do people usually come through the door with about franchising? Well, there are several big assumptions one of them is that it's only fast food and french fries. And there are <laughs> many, many other options than just fast food. We're aware of that because they've been around for so long, 50 plus years, and they've got the flashing signs by the side of the road. But there are all other kinds of other options available from boutique fitness studios, hair salons, massage studios, automotive aftermarket, tutoring, senior care. There's a lot of businesses that are serving the homes, such as uh, residential cleaning, painting, handymen, lawn care, pool care, pet care. Uh, pet care is exploding. So there are many more options. So, so people aren't aware that many times when you have a successful independent business, and they start to grow and expand. And then at some point they start to franchise that, that's an option. And during the last couple of years, many of these service-based businesses were deemed essential. So they continued and many of them had banner years. People are home, they want things done. Yes. And, and they've saved money in other places. So they've done things. So it's, it's really benefited a lot. And Many of those types of companies are also Monday through Friday, traditional business hours. So they're not working 24 seven types of things. Um, maybe another myth might be that it, it takes a million dollars. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. certainly there are franchises that are very affordable. Some you can start from a home office or a small warehouse, sometimes even an office in your home. And as you grow the business, you may then expand to a larger office. And that's great because you've got the revenue then to offset it. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, one I, other, one oh, other yeah. myth, if I might, yes. is that people think you have to have experience. But if we, in some industries you do, but for most, they don't. They want that person who has business acumen, has that fire in the belly, that can-do attitude, the person is coachable, they don't necessarily have to have that technical skill. So mm -hmm. for example, a hair salon, most franchisees are, are business people. They are not technicians. They're never going to get their cosmetology mm -hmm. license. They're never going to work behind the counter, but they like the business model and they don't have those skills. So sometimes if we look at other industries, let's say a painting franchise, again, the owner is not going to be the person painting. They're going to be right. hiring the painters and managing mm -hmm. and growing the business. Ideally a very large business. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, well, I, I like all of those because I definitely do think um, the one that you mentioned about, you know, fast food, about being restaurants all the time, like, and then also the money, because I do think a lot of times people think that, you know, oh, it's going to cost me like $50,000 to franchise, to get a franchise business. And certainly franchise fees is an investment. Keep in mind that you're building equity. So you think of a home, you make a down payment and you take out a mortgage and you buy a home like and and then you probably fix it up inflation helps and then you have this asset that at some point in time if you want to sell you can likewise with a business a business is that investment you grow it you scale it and at some point in time you'll either want to hand it down or sell it mm-hmm. yeah i think the key thing you said is that it's an it's an investment and, and that's what you have to see it as. It's not only an investment in a business, but it's also an investment in you and your future. Yes. And so if you look at it that way, I like that you, um, you know, paralleled it to home. If you look at it that way, then you'll see it as you'll see the opportunity for growth. And even if, right, if they, they may want to scale it and open up more franchises, <laughs> Exactly. There are the people that we call the empire builders, and they want Mm -hmm. multiple units or sometimes multiple franchises. And yet I can remember one man called me up and and he wanted another franchise. And he said that he had one and he had grown it and had just sold it. And he wanted another one now, a little bigger, a little more prestige. And I asked him which one he had bought and what he had done. And he told me, and I said, so why did you do that? And he said, It was the only one I could afford. But he said, I knew I had confidence in myself and my skills and abilities, and I wanted it to come back to benefit me. So he said, I'm at that point. So now I want to have more options. I have some more money to invest. Again, similar to a home. Sometimes you start with a starter home Mm -hmm. and you improve it. And then you might move to another neighborhood or better school system or whatever the case is. And likewise with a business. You could add on additional locations or units or add on another whole business or sell one and, and do another. Very true. I, I, that's, that's some good advice. So let's talk about women in franchising, because obviously we know a lot of women have walked away from the workforce due to the pandemic or just, just due to like, you know, maybe finding that she wanted something different, um, well, just people in general, but I am going to focus on women because I'm a woman. So I'm just using myself as an example, everyone. Um, what exa- um, opportunities do you see out there um, for women in franchising? There are a ton of opportunities for women. Again, you don't have to have a technical experience. You don't have to have a fancy degree. A franchise company is going to look at you and what you're what you've done and are you coachable? You know, do you have a natural curiosity? Do you want to learn? Do you want to give good customer service? Do you want to be involved in the community? Can you manage your own time? Can you connect with people? A lot of times women have these skills just from running a household and keeping everything organized, but they don't necessarily get credit for that in the corporate world or they had a good job, but they took time off to raise their kids or care for elderly parents. And they look at going back and they don't wanna start at the bottom or close to the bottom. They they have more to offer. So they look at it and they learn about it and they say, my gosh, I could do this. And all of a sudden the light goes on and they say, I like, I want to sign the, the, the the back of the check or the I want to sign the front of the check instead of the back of the check. It's a whole it's a whole mindset change and there's this whole world that opens up to them that they can leverage and and apply themselves. Right. Yeah, I like that. Now we know franchising isn't for everyone and being a franchise business owner. So who who is it good for? Like who makes a good franchise business owner and who doesn't? Okay. And you're absolutely right. And thank you for mentioning that. That's, it's very important. 
So the person who needs a guaranteed paycheck every two weeks should not become a business owner or a franchisee. They would be too, too stressed. They may not have the financial wherewithal. Keep in mind that good franchise companies award a franchise. So a person has to be financially qualified. And if for some reason that person should not be successful, it would be terrible for them. But it's also a black mark on that franchise because they have to disclose that someone closed. So if you're evaluating a franchise company and you see a list of closures, you're mm -hmm. probably going to say, no, thank you. That's that's a red flag or at least a yellow flag, in my opinion. So someone that needs that guaranteed paycheck should not do it. They should stick with the job. Likewise, and I'm sure you've met people that are the true entrepreneurs. They are good at so many things and they want to do everything. <laughs> I tend to think of someone like a Lady Gaga. I could not imagine her as a franchisee because she would want to do everything in her own way. You know, she would probably show up to training wearing a meat dress or something crazy <laughs> like that. So I don't see her as following systems or procedures. She's too creative and mm -hmm. she would not feel comfortable. So it, it wouldn't, it would be a mismatch. But if we look at that and we say the person who needs a guaranteed paycheck, let's say is a one on the scale and that super creative renaissance person who can do everything is the 10, people on the scale, let's say from a three to seven would be good. Mm -hmm. And many times too, I have to mention that when I first got into franchising, I personally thought that you had to be this rock star. You had to be Superman or Superwoman to be a franchise business owner. And what I learned is the people who are owners really are no different than you or me. They just took action. They had confidence in themselves and they learned and they move forward step by step. So many times they are, they are no different. And yeah. too many times, I think women we shortchange ourselves. We don't dream mm -hmm. big enough. We don't mm -hmm. give ourselves enough credit. And if there's anything I would suggest would be to explore and evaluate your skills and what you bring to the table and what you could do and what your goals are and, and look at that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, like you said, you, you've got to have that discipline too. You do because okay. it's going to be your business. Mm -hmm. If you choose to sit on the couch and eat bonbons and watch daytime TV, that is your option. You will not <laughs> be successful that way, but it would be your option. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a lot of money wasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So di like be disciplined and then also like being patient. Cause like you said, if you need a paycheck every two weeks, like it's not the thing for you because you're going to have to invest in the in time into the business. And it just, it takes, like one of the things you mentioned earlier is like also networking. Like you have to take all those ingredients and put them together in order to like start and run a successful business. Right. Do you hear the term ramp up and a business mm -hmm. ramps up? You don't start with day one and yeah. and be in the black it takes a while to gain customers get repeat customers uh, gain efficiencies and and run a sound business yes um what do you think what effects have covid had on franchising it's it's somewhat of a two-sided coin if you will so certainly the, the restaurant industry has been affected a lot and businesses that do anything with uh, personal care where they're touching has been affected because in many states they've been closed for quite a while or for the restaurants, they may have modified their menu or if they didn't have a drive through they were dramatically affected. Those businesses were in the news a lot and it was very tough for them. On the flip side, some of the service-based businesses did extraordinarily well. And they don't tout their horn. They don't want to um, 
somewhat take advantage of a, of a poor mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. But if your water heater breaks, you're probably going to get it fixed and you're probably going to call someone to help you with it. Or if you're working from home all day and you need some things done, you're probably going to get them done. Or right. if your children are home and they need some additional tutoring to stay up to grade level, you're probably going to make that investment to do that. Or you look at the number of people that bought pets and mm -hmm. anything pet related, again, is has just skyrocketed. So there are industries and businesses that have done well, but they are not shouting from the rooftops and saying, oh, look at us. They're just quietly welcoming more people in and mm -hmm. keeping everything going and running successfully. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, and now I guess you would say, you know, where we are today in the pandemic, um, you, would you say you're starting to see a shift even with some of those businesses, like the ones that are offering like service, self, ser self care services or restaurants, like sort of seeing them like turn um, back to more of a positive um, side now? Yes, very much so. And and partly, and I'm sure you'll agree, is there's been a lot of pent up demand. Look how many people are going <laughs> on vacation. Yeah. And even though prices are up, they say we've missed seeing our grandparents or we, we miss mm -hmm. giving our kids this opportunity. So we're going to do it. So there is a lot of pent up demand and, and people want to make up for lost time. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, okay, well, why don't you tell everyone out there how they can work with you? Sure. My website is dianeploys.com. Probably easiest to contact me via quickchatwithdiane.com to schedule an appointment. I'm on LinkedIn under Diane Ploys, the franchise fitter. My last name is not only difficult to pronounce, it's also difficult to spell. <laughs> I will quickly go through it. It's spelled P as in Peter, L-E-U-S-S, -S, Plois as in Choice Voice or Rolls Royce. Uh, so that's the easiest way to get in touch with me. My direct phone number is 925-642-9976. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I just love it. And we'll also drop the links into the show notes as well. So you can grab them there. Well, Diane, this has been very informative. Such, such great information on the world of franchising. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for this me. opportunity. So many people aren't aware of it. So I think part of my role is simply educating people yes. and giving them an additional option. Yes, I love, yes, I definitely. I love that there is another, there's an option. And, and also the fact that this is something that you can, an investment you can make in yourself that you don't have to have the skill. You don't have to be technically trained in something in order to be good at, you know, managing the business. It opens up so many more opportunities. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have this particular license or if you do programming that you are at a certain level or know a certain language. So it opens up many more doors. And if you have some management skills, if you have some soft skills, you have a wide variety of options to choose from. Yes. Those soft skills, there's something else I tell you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> right. All right. So now we're going to move into three things with Diane. I'm going to ask you three questions. Um, one is, well, one is a combo. How do you start and end your day? Okay. I start my day and I heard this on a podcast. I'm a huge podcast listener and I thought it was cool. So I embrace it. They said every morning, stand up and give a thumbs up and say, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> awesome. So I, I start my day with that. I read a meditation and ideally I go for a run in the morning to get the endorphins going and clear my head. Mm -hmm. I, I love that combination and have been doing it for many years. Awesome. And how do you end the day? The, I end the day somewhat exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so my days are usually full. I don't necessarily have a wind down routine. It's usually succumbing because it's late and I have to go to bed. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> All right. Now, um, second question. If you are a goal setter or an intention setter, what's the one thing you've set for yourself this year? Well, one crazy goal. And I either read this or heard it on a podcast again, and I liked it. I'm in a new age group this year. And the person recommended learning a new sport for every decade. And I oh. like that. Mm-hmm. So I thought I've been wanting to learn pickleball for a while. So this is my year I am learning pickleball. And I have been taking lessons. In fact, I had a lesson last night. And I have a long ways to go and find it very humbling and embarrassing. The <laughs> progress is slow, but I, I continue on. But you're doing it. That's always great. You should always be learning something. Um, And last, what do you do on a day off? On a day off, I like to relax by going hiking, reading, potentially working in the yard. Nothing special, possibly getting together with friends, planning future activities, just catching up, catching my breath, doing some of the household chores that need to be done. Um, But just trying to keep on top of things. Awesome. I like that. (laughs) And before I let you go, would you please give our audience um, maybe the top two to three things that you'd like for them to take away from this conversation today? I recommend that people give themselves some more credit for where they are and what they've done. I think too many times we tend to compare ourselves to someone up here when in all truth, we've done a lot and we've accomplished a lot. And give yourself credit for that. Look at opportunities, uh, work hard. There's an expression that has a little bit of a twist to it. And that is when opportunity knocks, the person who answers it is wearing overalls, meaning they're the person who works hard. So do put the time and effort, be the best that you can be, but also don't shortchange yourself. Look at at other things and what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. Set some new goals, some new ambitions. Be curious to what is out there. I love nothing better than working with someone and presenting some additional options for them that they didn't know existed. And they can look at that and see, would that work or not? I should also mention, if I might, that I work with people nationally. I've worked with and placed people from New York to Florida, Alaska, Hawaii. Right now I'm working with some people from Uruguay who are simply waiting for their visa to be processed, which is a little unusual. And my services are free. We are paid by the franchise companies for this for the pre-screening, the qualification, the education we do. So I've had a number of people who've explored it. Some said, yes, we're ready. Some have said, no, we've got to save up more. Some have said, hmm, you know what? I'm happy in my job. But they go back feeling better because that's their choice then. Awesome. I love that. Great, great, great advice. And all the education that you've given us today on franchising. Um, It's been so helpful. So anyone listening out there, you can contact Diane. It doesn't cost you anything to like get the information and to try. (laughs) Thank you very much. I like to be a resource. So again, sometimes I'll chat with people and maybe I'll connect them with a career coach or someone that can help with a resume or whatever the case is. But if I can be a resource I feel that I'm paying it forward. And so many people helped me in my career that at this stage of my life, it also gives me great fulfillment. So, well, no better way to end than that with what you just said. (laughs) Thank you again, Diane, so much for joining me today. Um, But best of luck to you in the future. And I hope you get better at pickleball. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And all the best to you as well. Thank you. Stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Globe Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. Thanks again to Diane for joining the show today and for sharing all that great info 
on how to start a franchise business. Remember, it is free to get started with her. So if you have any thoughts of wanting to start a business or starting a franchise that we talked about today, be sure to check out her website at dianehoyce.com. You can also grab the link in the show notes. If you'd like to learn more about Glow Up Girl, visit our website at glowupgirl.com. You can check out past podcast episodes. You can sign up to be a guest on the show, grab our social links, and so much more. As always, thank you all for joining me today, and I'll see you all next week. Until then, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.